Good morning, church. I'm super excited to be in God's house this morning, and I hope that you are too, because this is a word that God has laid upon my heart. And I'm going to tell you a bit about me. My name is Talita Pillay, for those of you that do not know. And this is how I look on a Monday to Friday. So this is me. As you can see, I brought my pink hard hat with me. And this is a construction site that I'm busy site supervising. And um, the Lord was just working within me on a day when I was on site. And today I want to speak to you a bit about the construction process. And there's three concepts that I want to speak to you about is, is, is the conception phase. So the concept phase the construction phase and the completion phase. And I was standing on site once and, and, and the project was going, is going on. And you know, at that moment where everything just goes wrong, where there were sewer pipes that were just being hit, there were redesigns that had to happen and everything just seemed to be going wrong. And there was a moment when I just stood, just looking, I just took a moment to stand, and life consumed me at that moment. Everything was just gushing in. I was questioning, God, is this the career you want me to be in? God, is this the place you want me to be in? God, where is it that you want me? Apart from what was happening in front of me, I was having a full introspection of where I was in my life. And at that moment, my hands just consume my face and my body language just slouched down. And I was ready to say, God, I can't do this anymore. God, this is now working out. The pressures of life, the pressures of everything is just consuming me. And a colleague tapped on my shoulder and he said, Tali, get up. And I got up and he looked me straight in the eye and he said, Tali, in construction, there is a beauty. It's got to get worse before it's going to get better. And in that moment, I just, just took that phrase. I just took what he said, and the Holy Spirit dropped it in my heart. He said, Tali, you're always going to be under construction. So this morning, the title of my message to you is that we are all under construction. At some season in our lives, and I'm going to speak about three seasons this morning, but at some season in our life, we are being constructed by our maker, by our king of kings, and by our lord of lords. And there's a beautiful scripture that I can tie this up to, and it comes from Jeremiah 18. And the Bible says, so I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, that is Jeremiah, and he said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, Israel. You see, the first phase that I want to speak to you about life is the concept phase. Concept in construction meaning the, de the thought, the idea, the design, the phase in, in life where you were born, you were a concept, you were thought of by God. This morning, I just want to let you know, and I want to encourage you, that you are not a mistake. Look to your neighbor, look to someone sitting next to you and say, tell them you are not a mistake. However old you might be, the day you were conceived, God knitted you. God knitted you together in your mother's womb. God formed you, unique. You are unique. Nobody has the same fingerprint as you. Nobody has the same miracle as you. Nobody has the same testimony as you. You were the concept of God formed together in your mother's womb. He had a plan and a purpose for you and for your life. And you see, God formed you. 
Because the Lord said, I want to make man and I want to make man in my image. You are the image of God. You are his concept. He has the final say in your life. The devil is a liar. He didn't create you. He doesn't know where you're going. He doesn't know the plans that God has for you. All he can do is to come kill, steal, and destroy. But this morning, I want to tell you that God created you. You are not a mistake. If people have said you were a mistake in your life, if circumstances declared you as a mistake, you are not a mistake. You are built for purpose by God, shaped together, knitted together for a purpose that He has created you to fulfill this morning. And you might be in that concept phase of life where you need to find your identity, where your identity was lost and the enemy keeps throwing new identities at you. Or you might be in that concept phase of life where you're making a decision and it's a new idea and it's a new venture in your life and you're looking to God. You're saying, God, where must I go? God, how must I do this? But I want to let you know this morning that he has it under control, that he has you in the palm of his hands, just like the potter that chooses his finest clay, the finest clay that he takes as a concept He has this idea in his mind of the pot and the jar that he is going to make. You are just like that clay in God's hands, that he is shaping you, that he is molding you into the person that you have created, that he has created you to be. And that is phase number one, the concept phase. Or you might be like me in phase number two, which is the construction phase. And this phase, I title it life. Because just like construction, unforeseen circumstances come. We might hit pipes that we don't see. There might be stuff underground that resurfaces. There might be sickness that creeps in. There might be anxiety. There might be addiction. There might be confusion that creeps in. You see, the construction phase is God chipping you. Is God molding you? Is God seeing just as the pot of the crack and taking new clay and forming a jar that is going to be used as a vessel? You see, the construction phase is a phase that we don't like to be in. It's a phase that we are tested in. It's a phase that can consume us. It's a phase where we stand in, just like me, looking over life, And looking over the future and saying, God, I don't think I can do it. You see, the construction phase is a test. It's a test that God puts. And yes, the Christian walk of faith isn't going to always be easy. It isn't going to always be easy. But it's going to be worth it. It's going to be so worth it. Because when God chips... And when the crack comes and God puts new clay, and when circumstances come and blow you down and you're just sitting there and you're just like, God, I need you. He is always there. Just as the potter molds the jar and he sees the cracks and he comes and he fills it, so is God filling you. So is God going to use your test to be a testimony in his kingdom. So is God going to use you. I said, God, how do you use me? A mere, just a little girl. A mere lady now. But God, how how are you using me? And the Lord said, Tali, I'm constructing you. And I believe this morning that he is constructing each and every one of you. Don't sell yourself short of what God has for your life. He is constructing you in every area, in every aspect of your life. All you got to do is keep the faith. The Bible says God gives us beauty for ashes. And maybe your construction phase looks like ashes right now. Maybe everything is dead and you're trying to get up the ashes and you're trying to move on in your life. And God comes and says, I'm going to give you beauty in this phase. I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. You see, the construction process, in it there is progress. Because we have the design, we have the concept, we have what we were looking for, we have the idea, 
And then we move into the construction. We move into the phase where, where tests come our way. And the weight of life comes our way. And we just stand and we just say, God, you take the wheel. God, you come into my life and you take control. Church, we cannot do life without God in it. We cannot do life without the word. You see, because when I'm in my construction phase at the moment, in all phases of my life, whether it be my career, my personal life, my emotional life, God is constructing me. And God might be constructing you today. And I want to encourage you, if you're in that phase of your life, don't give up. It has to get worse before it gets better. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to weep in the presence of God. It's okay to be angry in the presence of God. It's okay to say, God, this is the raw me. This is my heart. The Lord knows your request. The Lord knows your heart before you can even take it to him. And if that's you and you find yourself in that phase, I want to encourage you. You need to step out of that phase. And the next phase that I want to speak to you about is the completion phase. This phase excites me because from the conception, from the concept to the construction, there's beauty in the product that God has created. And you are that beautiful product. You are that beautiful jar that the potter has shaped and that the potter has molded. But guess what he's gonna, God's going to do with that jar now? He's going to use it as his vessel. He's gonna, he shaped you. He molded you. But now he's going to use you and he's going to fill you. You see, the completion phase is a phase where life is going as, it, as it's planned. Where you know the promise that God has for your life. But you see, with completion comes maintenance. In any building, with any concept, with any construction, in life, maintenance happens. The hairline cracks happen. Sickness happens. Anxiety happens. But I'm, remind, re, but I'm reminded of the scripture in Philippians 4. And this has probably been the scripture that I have repeated thousands and thousands of times in my heart because I really needed God. And it says, be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, make your request known to God and the peace. Oh, that beautiful peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart. This morning in that completion phase, in that phase where you're saying, God, what's the next step? Yes, minor things might come and take you off your path, but God, what's the next, what's the next step? And he says, be anxious about nothing. Let his peace guide you. Let his peace consume you. Let his peace guard your heart. There's a song that's titled, He's Still Working on Me. And I really just want to encourage you with the verse of the song. It says, he's still working on me to make me what I need to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun, the earth, Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. This morning, God's still working on you. He's not done with you. He's not done with your story. He's not done with your life. Don't think that this is the end. God's still working on you. Don't think that these restrictions are going to be in the end. God's still working in this country. God's still working in this world. God's still working in our schools. God's still working in our hearts. He is working on you. So this morning, if you remember one thing from my message, remember this, that you are under construction, that you need God to come shape you, that you need God to come mold you, that you need God to come fill you and use you. There was a song way back that, that we used to sing at church and it said, shape me, mold me. God use me, God fill me. 
I give my life into the potter's hands. God calls me, He guides me. He leads me, He walks beside me. I give my life into the potter's hands. This morning, I have a question for you. Which potter are you trusting your life with? You see, because there's only one potter who is the creator and the giver of life, who has a pot that has your name on it, who has a pot that he's shaped, that has cracks, yes, but he fixes it. Where he puts new clay, he gives you new ventures, he gives you new seasons. I'm so grateful that seasons come and seasons go. I'm grateful that in Mossel Bay we will experience summer soon. I'm grateful that seasons come and seasons go. But the Word, the Word of the Lord remains firm forever. The cornerstone, His church, which He builds on a rock that the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail on your life. The gates of hell shall not prevail on your children's life, on your family's life, because God is the potter and He is shaping you and He is molding you into who He wants you to be. No matter the age you're at, no matter the season you're in or the phase you're in, He's working on you. This morning, every eye closed. If you like me and you feel that you're in this construction phase of life and you're saying, Tully, just like you, I looked over the horizon and I said, God, I can't do this without you. God, I need you in my life. If that is you this morning, I would really love to pray with you. If you could just slip up your hand so that I cannot acknowledge that I'm praying with you. Amen. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are the potter. And I thank you that we are the clay, Jesus. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that even as you're shaping each hand that has risen, God, even as you're molding their lives, even as you're using them and you're filling them, God, I pray a fresh refilling into their cup, God. I pray a fresh anointing into that vessel that you have created them to be Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, that even as they go through these phases of life, God, when they feel like everything is consuming them, God, I pray that, God, you would, you would consume them. Holy Spirit, that you would consume their hearts. That even as we declare in Philippians, God, that they won't be anxious about anything, but that your peace, God, that your peace would consume them and would fill their hearts to let them know that they are unique, God, that you have knitted them together in their mother's womb, God, that they are not a mistake, Jesus, but they are called, they are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, heirs to your kingdom, God, that they are called your sons and your daughters and that you have awesome and amazing plans and even better testimonies for their life, God. I pray all of this in your mighty name. And even as we go back into worship and sing about how you are our champion, God, I pray that you would deal with those giants in our lives, God, and that you would consume our hearts. And all God's people said, Amen.